أكبر الله أكبر Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Islamic Center at New York University podcast coming to you straight from the heart of New York City. We're building an amazing Muslim community here at ICNYU where everyone is welcomed and respected no matter where you're from or where you're at. This is the place to be. So open your ears and your heart and come along with us on another life-changing journey. Bismillah. Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasri li amri wa ahlil aqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and peace be upon you all welcome to this halaqa i feel it's a very special time right now because we're literally like an hour away from ramadan uh, joining us and i i just feel like we really need to maximize this time because oftentimes we wait Till something starts and then we're like okay we're ready to roll up our sleeves but this hour is actually a very special hour and so the title of today's halakha is about welcoming ramadan beautifully and i want us to just get in that mindset of you know how we should be when we are about to receive an amazing gift and not just from anyone but from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and now is the time to orient our heart towards that you know, when imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now looking at you and seeing, you know, my abd is not even waiting till Ramadan starts, but is eager for Ramadan to start, is eager to receive this gift from me and is longing for it, you know. And even the companions, they would long for Ramadan after one Ramadan has finished. And so is that longing in our heart? Is it is it in our being? Are we thinking about it? Are we thinking about are we thinking about, you know, how do I want to embrace this gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is about to give me? But the key to embracing a gift is a very crucial ingredient, which is you have to believe in your heart that you need it. You know, if someone gives you a gift and you let's say you already have this thing or this thing that they give you, right? How are you gonna be when you receive that gift? It's just gonna be like, oh, okay, I already kinda already have it, right? <laughs> but if you needed something and then someone comes along and, and gives you this gift, how are you gonna <coughs> embrace it? What? Like open arms. <coughs> open arms. I can't I can't believe you you know, you thought of this, I can't believe you're giving me this. Your your whole heart is oriented towards that gift, but you're gonna be also very present with that gift. But more than that, you're going to be present with the giver of the gift. You are going to appreciate the giver of the gift because that's true shukr. Shukr is not, oh, alhamdulillah, I take the gift and I say alhamdulillah verbally. Shukr is, I see the, the love of the giver who is giving me the gift. And so with Ramadan, with anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us, do you see his love for you as he gives you the gift? You know, if anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set for us, any act of worship, whether it is prayer, fasting, umrah, right, Juma, any of these things, they are there because we need it, not because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs it. And but many of us live our lives and check off these obligations, and I know you guys have heard me say this many times, but we, we function as if, here, Allah, I did it, okay, check, as if it is for Allah. Forgetting that everything that Allah has subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded and has prohibited is for because is because we need it. It's not because he need it, he needs it. Allahul Ghani wa nahnu al fuqara So as we approach Ramadan, just as we approach uh, Umrah, you know, we recently came back from Umrah and when we are there we say, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik, right? Oh Allah, I am here, I'm at your service. You're ready to, as you're walking, as you're, you know, Brother Khalid, you were there, as you were, as we were, you know, going there, that's this, that's the phrase, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. Oh Allah, I am here, I am at your service. Even before we go and complete the actual, um, you know, um, steps of Umrah, is that you're saying this, why? Because you're about to embrace, you're about to receive a great gift. You're about to receive the rewards of a great gift. You're about to receive closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so you're, you're walking towards Allah. Everything that we do is about walking towards Allah in all our conditions. But it's about preparing this heart to receive what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for us. So you're saying, I'm here. You know, you know, we talk about the power of showing up. 
This is us showing up to what Allah is about to give us. Whether it's Umrah, whether it's Juma, whether it's your five prayers per day, and whether it's Ramadan. And so this hour before the first evening of Ramadan comes in is very, very special. This is where we start orienting this heart to saying, Ya Allah, I need this. I need this month. I've been waiting for this month. This month has exactly what I need. And you know, we need to embrace it in the same way, with the same trust that we would if somebody, if an expert tells us, oh, hey, this is really good for you. You know, or say we needed something from in a specific in, from a specific person. They say, or or you go and you trust an expert in a specific area that you need help with, and they tell you, hey, this is good for you. We trust it. We say, okay, I'm going to do this. But here's Ramadan. Allah prescribes for us 30 days, an entire month, in which we train our hearts to come back to its position as leader of our being, not our nafs that we've been feeding all year long. Now it's time to say, no, I need to, this is, this is my training camp. This is my boot camp. And Allah has prescribed it because we need it. Because in the year, we need something like this to orient ourselves back. Throughout the year, Allah gives us smaller, smaller opportunities, right? But Ramadan is a huge one. Every week we have Jummah. Every year you have Ramadan. So Allah gives us these opportunities to turn back to reorient ourselves back to him, to turn our heart and make him the priority, to center ourselves back around Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way that we were designed to. But if we take it as if, oh, it's another, it's another Ramadan, you know, it's gonna, you know, just going through the motions, cruise control, we actually rob ourselves of reaping many of the spiritual, but also mental and emotional benefits of this month. So when we, view something is I need this and alhamdulillah it is here and alhamdulillah not only is it here but it's exactly when I need it you approach it so much differently you are ready now to maximize it you are going to be more present with your acts of worship you're going to be more present even before Maghrib arrives and I encourage you to have even just a few moments alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Maghrib comes in and to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I am here. I am at your service. I am here ready to embrace this month. I am here ready to maximize this gift that you have given me. Alhamdulillah, thank you for this gift. To show shukr for it. But then we have to follow up that shukr with action because that's how you really show that you appreciate something is that you use it. You utilize it. If someone gave you a gift and you never opened it, and you left it to the side, <coughs> is that really true appreciation? It's not. But when you open the gift and you, you explore it and then you utilize and that person sees you doing that, they're like, wow, they really love that gift. That's true appreciation, is utilizing it. But many times, and when we know this from a hadith, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to see the effects of his blessings upon his servant. He loves to see us utilize and maximize the blessings that he gives us. But many times when we think of this hadith, we think of external blessings. We think of like, you know, outside provisions that we get. We don't think of Ramadan. We don't think of acts of worship. That, no, alhamdulillah for these acts of worship. Alhamdulillah that I get to have five opportunities in the day to have a meeting with my Lord. Five opportunities in the day where I can maintain the sila between me and my Lord. So I can get what I need. So I can walk away and go back to my life nourished. And getting what I need to thrive spiritually, mentally, emotionally on all levels. The Prophet ﷺ, he says, There has come to you Ramadan, a blessed month which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enjoined you to fast. In it the gates of heaven are open and the gates of hell are closed, and every devil is chained up. In it, Allah has a night which is better than a thousand months. Whoever is deprived of its goodness is indeed deprived. You know, many of us, we focus so much on um, shaitan being locked up, right? This is often something that we're connected to, but we forget the part that the heaven doors remain open the entire month. Like, imagine this as you're waking up as you're going through your day as you're fasting that 
Allah cr created this month to be filled with mercy to such a degree that the doors of hell are closed and the doors of heaven are open the entire month. If that is not rahmah and love, what is that? Meaning that it is so hard, that meaning that there's no, you know, it, the door is closed for anyone to go to hell. <laughs> it's closed. You only have one door open and that's heaven. So get in there. <laughs> Right, And so how many of us are connected to that fact that we're living in a time, we're living in an entire month in which as I'm breathing, as I'm living in the unseen, the doors of heaven are open. You know, connecting to the unseen is so important. And, and this is actually what ignites our relationship to all the acts of worship. And this is evident in the Quran. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah, He says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alif Lam Mim, ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala first says that this is this is a book in which there is no doubt, affirming the truth of this book. He says in it it is guidance for those who have taqwa, for those who are conscious of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Then he describes those who have taqwa. The first thing was not prayer, was not charity. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Those who believe in the unseen. Why would belief in the unseen come before prayer, establishing the prayer, and giving charity? Why? Because we know prayer is going to be the first thing we, we are asked about, right? But why would belief in the unseen, I mean, there's no coincidence in the order in which Allah says things. Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ first? I don't like to solidify faith that there is an omnipotent presence out there that's that we need to connect with. Yes, to solidify our faith, absolutely. It's like a prerequisite for the others to have significance. It's a prerequisite for everything else to have significance, absolutely. Belief in the unseen is what ignites your Iman and the, the inner faith and energy you need to do everything else. Prayer, what are you connecting with? The unseen. You know, in your, when, you're, when you're reciting Surah Al-Fatiha, per the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, is that to every verse that you say in Surah Al-Fatiha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds. And many of us are disconnected from this. We say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Rahman Rahim, right? But we're disconnected from the fact that after every verse of Surah Al-Fatiha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a response. <coughs> and I encourage you to connect with that hadith. And really sit with that. And even memorize what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying back to you. So that as you're praying, you are connecting. Now is that, you're connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you feel like you're in a conversation with Him. But isn't that unseen? Isn't that Al-Ghayb? We don't see Allah. He's unseen. We don't see the angels, the one on the right writing our good deeds, the one on the left writing our bad deeds. We don't see how whenever we gather for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there's a group of people who gather to remember Allah, that the angels find these gatherings and they sit amongst us. And then when the gathering is over, they go up to the heavens, they go up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they mention us by name. This is unseen. There are real, crucial, great, immense realities in the ghaib that we're disconnected from. And when we're disconnected from that, guess what becomes our greater reality? What becomes our greater reality when we're disconnected from the unseen? This world. This world, this world and everything in it, our problems. <laughs> Everything becomes, it feels so permanent. Our blessings, we feel like we're guaranteed them. Our comforts, but this isn't Jannah. Connection to the unseen ignites your faith. It is what allows you to run to prayer. It is what allows you to be present in prayer. It is what allows you to, be, to have taqwa, to be conscious of what you're doing and to be present with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you are doing them. It is what allows you to fast beautifully. It is what allows you to welcome Ramadan beautifully. 
because you're aware of the rewards he is giving you beyond the veil in which, you know, beyond what you don't see. So, and we need this connection. Many of us, especially in our times today, we're so disconnected from this. We're disconnected from the akhira. We're disconnected the, with, to the fact that this world is temporary. That we're, we're, this is not our permanent destination. And subhanAllah, before every Ramadan, I'm sure many of us can attest to this, that before Ramadan, we hear of people passing away, young, old, middle age, we hear of this. This is a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That this is a gift that's not for everyone. <laughs> Meaning it's not guaranteed for everyone. And that there are people who will not reach this Ramadan. And so do not take it for granted. It's not something that you are owed. It's not something that we are entitled to. It is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how do we then embrace it? How do we then welcome it? And so, but this requires again a connection to the unseen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing for us. And, you know, when we are disconnected from the unseen and we're disconnected from the fact that, you know, we have an appointment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we don't know when my appointment is, when your appointment is, you know, this disconnect from the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can take us at any time is actually exacerbating our struggles in this world. And many of us don't realize it. Because you know, when you actually have a very sharp connection to the Akhira, you f start to filter out what actually doesn't matter from your life. The things that used to bother you start not to bother you. You start to actually have this sharp vision of what matters, what is important, what you should carry, what I shouldn't carry, what is, it my, what is your responsibility, what isn't your responsibility. Because many times when this world is, we look at it as our permanent reality, we carry more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked us to carry. We, we take on more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked us to take on. We attach to more than we are meant to attach to. As a result, we are heavier emotionally, mentally, spiritually. And so don't ever think that your connection to the unseen, your connection to the akhirah, to start igniting this, 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 this connection to the fact that, yeah, I'm not guaranteed this evening. Yeah, I'm not guaranteed tomorrow. Yeah, that there is, you know, the Prophet wasallam, when he would wake up for tahajjud, he would affirm what is true. He would say, Ya Allah, you are al haq you know, and your, your message is al-haq, and the Qur'an is al-haq, <coughs> hell is al-haq, hell is true, and heaven is true. This is the Prophet ﷺ, who is more connected to truth than him. Yet he would affirm all of these realities of the ghaib every time he would get up for tahajjud. And we, who are not like the Prophet ﷺ, rarely remember these realities. So this is the month to ignite our connection to the unseen. To the fact that I need to stop living as if I'm guaranteed tomorrow. And watch how your life changes. Watch how more present you become. Watch how more mindful you become. You don't, people often are afraid of like connecting to the akhirah, connecting to the unseen, connecting to these realities, you know, envisioning Jannah, envisioning the akhirah, envisioning their place. You know why one of the greatest psychological barriers is? is that they're afraid that they're gonna miss out on this dunya. They're afraid they're gonna be like boring. <laughs> no one, oh, that's gonna be like, oh, that, that guy's like a sheikh now, he's so religious, you know, she's a sheikh now, you know? You know, it actually does something opposite. It has, a, a, you know, an opposite effect than what people perceive. It actually makes you walk this earth lighter. You become more open-hearted. You become more loving you become more present because you're so focused on what Allah is giving you. You're preparing for a world that is eternal. And this world doesn't want you to think like that. This world wants this dunya to be your only reality in your mind for it isn't our only reality and actual reality. Because then the more that it is your reality, the more you suffer. The more you chase an illusion, I always mention the example of a mirage, right? When someone's in the desert and they're thirsty, 
and they're dehydrated, they often see something that they think is water, but it isn't. And what do they do? They start running. They start depleting their resources to get there. And when they get there, it's a false destination. What they were chasing has nothing to give them, has nothing to offer them. And we do this in our world today. We chase, we chase, we chase, leaving, leaving what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called us to, and we chase what maybe people call us to, what society calls us to, and in the end we suffer. Does it give us anything in return? No. Nothing lasting. This is the nature of this world. You chase it, it runs away from you. <coughs> Ibn Qayyim rahimullah, he says, the worldly life is like a shadow. If you try to catch it, you will never be able to do so. But if you turn your back towards it, you will find, you know, that it has no choice but to follow you. And this, you guys, I'm sure you guys can attest to moments like this, right? Where you let go of something and you depend on Allah and you detach and you find it coming to you easily, right? This is the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has designed this world. And when we make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the akhirah a priority, guess what Allah does for you? He gives you the akhirah and He gives you the dunya. But if you make the dunya your priority and you forget the akhirah, you lose the akhirah but you also lose the dunya. You become like that person chasing the mirage, thinking that that's going to offer you something and it offers you nothing. And this is what's happening to people today. And I see it depleting people spiritually, mentally, psychologically, on all levels. Because we're chasing the wrong things. We're like, oh, that's going to be good for me. That's going to be good for me. Without even taking a moment to say, is it pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is it going to be beneficial for my akhirah? Am I getting rewarded for this in my akhirah? Is it going to weigh heavy on my scales? Is it going to take me away from Allah? It might not be as obvious as halal and haram, but just having that thought process, it might be that something is halal. But you're taking that moment to think, is it good for my dunya and my akhirah? Even in your du'as, is it, Ya Allah, if it's good for my dunya and my akhirah, then facilitate it for me. If it's not good for my dunya or my akhirah, take it away from me. Your du'as and your prior, the way you, you, you make du'a tells a lot about what we prioritize. If your du'as are void of any du'a, of any supplication for the akhirah, that says a lot. So this Ramadan, organize your du'as. Make the first du'as you make about your akhirah. About you, you, the state in which you will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Spend a lot of time having your initial du'as be about the akhirah. Make your du'as for the dunya, of course. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to get our share from the dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to have beautiful lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to enjoy His blessings. But it's about priorities. It's about giving everything its right and putting everything in its place so that we do not burden ourselves more than we were designed to bear. You know, today, many times I'll hear, not t today, I mean in our times today, I'll hear people say, you know, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها, right? That Allah does not burden a soul more than it can bear. And many times, what do you think people will say nowadays? but I can't, I can't bear it. I don't understand this. And what we fail to do is to assess what we bring into the process. What we fail to do is assess what am I adding into the equation that Allah did not ask me to add? What am I adding to the weight that I'm carrying that Allah did not test me with? Because many times there's the test itself, the challenges of life, and then there's what we add onto it what we're chasing, what we're prioritizing, how we're interpreting the experience, how we're thinking about Allah, how we're thinking about ourselves even through the experience. Oh, you know, or maybe we're even speaking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah hates me, Allah has abandoned me. Many times we fail to assess what we're bringing into the process. Am I following the prescriptions of my creator? Am I following the guidelines of my creator? When things are in turmoil in our lives, we need to always ask this question. What is Allah calling upon me to align? What is Allah calling upon me to fix? 
what is what name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is he pointing me to? Then you start to look at your tests and your struggles so differently. Instead of what is what is what is what am I being burdened with or what is what is um, being taken away from me? No, it's what is Allah giving me through this process. And Ramadan gives you a great opportunity to do this realignment work where you assess and you start assessing and you start asking different questions. How have I been living my life? How have I been living the year so far? Have I been circling or centering my heart around Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know, when you go to Umrah and you, or you do Hajj, Tawaf is about recentering yourself around Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remembering that's what you were created for. And that's what you were designed to do. And, be, and as a result, you experience this peace in your heart. You remember that I can feel, I can experience that alignment when I recenter myself around the only one who is deserving of being the center. The only one, remember I always say that every, every, um, everybody has something that's their highest value. And in, in essence, everybody has a God. Everybody has something that is their highest value that they worship. Umrah, Ramadan, our prayers, all of that is to remind you that no one is worthy of being your highest value. Nothing is worthy of being your highest value except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you give that highest value to anything else, you will always feel misaligned. You will always feel like you're in conflict, torn, never really committing to one thing. You're like one foot in <coughs> the deen, one foot in something else. Or, or you're trying to live your life, but then deen is like, you know, on the side. So you never really get to experience the fully aligning power of submitting yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is in essence what Islam is. It is a verb. It is an act of submission. It is orienting yourself to Allah. It's realizing that, Ya Allah, no one is worthy of me worshipping than you. And if I do not worship you, I will worship something else that is false a false destination that was never worthy of me submitting to. And people suffer when they do that. Because this is not how we were programmed. This is not how we were designed. So anytime you go against your design, you suffer and you struggle. Anytime you make the nafs the lead of your being, you suffer. And you're living from that lower self. And so Ramadan comes and then it says what? No, no, no. You got you to gotta stop living from there. Elevate. <laughs> no, no, live from your higher self. That's what you were created to do. You were not created to live from this lowly part that is constantly seeking desires, instant gratification. And in this world we live in, that's what it's promoting. It's actually promoting people to live from their lower self, not from their higher self. It wants people to stay low. It doesn't want people to be elevated. This world, is, this, you know, our society today wants people to stay you know, in that, in, that, in that chase. So they never live from, their, from that higher self that understands that they have a Lord, that understands that they have a destination. And then gets, guess who gets robbed of the beauty and blessings the most? Us. So Ramadan, it calls upon you to live from your higher self, to say that you have a ruh that transcends this physical body that is housing it temporarily. You have a ruh that transcends this temporary world. Ruh is soul, by the way, in Arabic. You have the soul that transcends this temporary world you're living in. It has a home. And it's not from here. As Rumi says, my soul is from elsewhere, and I plan on ending up there. So in Ramadan, whether you, it's Umrah, Ramadan, whether you start aligning yourself, even in one day, when you start aligning yourself around your five meetings with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you give your soul a taste of its home. You remind your soul of where it's from. So in the beginning of Ramadan, when you start out, a lot of people are like, uncomfortable. Why? Because the nafs is not used to you, being, you saying no to it. 
It's like, no, no, you're not the lead anymore. I'm not going to let you lead me. No, I have a heart. It needs to be the lead. It needs to come to the surface. It, it needs to be the, the center of my being right now. I need, to care for, I need to care for this most important part within me. This is the part that I have to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the part that, of me that I have to bring back to Allah sound and whole. And so as you continue, you say no to your nafs. And then as you use your mind to serve this heart, you start using this mind to what? Learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to do dhikr, to read the Qur'an. This is the month of the Qur'an to connect with the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something changes. You get a nourishment that is higher. That, so even when you're not physically nourished, you feel sufficed. And try this. In the moments that you feel the hunger pains come in while you're fasting, go do some dhikr. Go read some Quran. Go talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something powerful happens. You're not as hungry. Why? Because you fed your higher self. You nourished this most noble part of you. When that part of you is nourished, your, your nafs, doesn't need to come to the surface any as much and its longings don't become are not as strong and so the more you feed yourself spiritually even you know subhanallah when people are, are, are struggling with drug addiction I worked in substance abuse for almost three years and I saw the power of this when I worked with people who were addicted to alcohol opioids you know you name it when they accessed something higher than themselves and you know they say higher power you know this world's afraid of saying God but many of them actually do find God during that time and they realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one that can suffice them and as that heart connects to what is greater their attachment to to what they have been addicted to becomes lesser and I've seen the power of that that is the power of giving your soul what it needs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is what Ramadan is here to give you you know and if this if every Ramadan or in the past if Ramadan has been something that has come and passed and you haven't given it your best make a commitment today and say Ya Allah help me make this my best Ramadan Help me make this my most realigning Ramadan. Help me make help make this Ramadan the Ramadan in which I experience the sweetness of fully submitting to you. Where I'm all in, Ya Rabb. I'm all in. Because isn't that what we do when we love someone? Isn't that what commitment is? You say you're all in, right? But we actually have a commitment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have a covenant with our Lord that we made before we even entered this world, before our soul entered this physical body that it's housing. We made that commitment. We testify that He is our Lord. So shouldn't we be all in? Shouldn't then when Ramadan comes, Ya Allah, I'm ready. I'm at your service. I am ready to maximize this month. And every time you feel your heart, you know, getting distracted or going, you bring it back. No, no, no. It's only a month, you know. Not that, of course, we, we, of course we want to continue it after Ramadan. But you, you're just saying, if I can do it for 30 days, I can do it for more. And then what happens as the month continues? Maybe you started out agitated. But guess what? As the month continues, people don't want Ramadan to leave. People cry because Ramadan is leaving. Because they tasted the sweetness of what it means to align ourselves with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was recently in Omran, as we were leaving, many people didn't want to leave. You know, it's sad. It's sad to leave a space that, uh, that gave you a taste of home. That gave you the sweetness of what it means to align yourself around Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you don't need to be there to experience that. I mean, of course, it, give, it gives it to you on one level, but you have Ramadan. Ramadan is knocking at your door. It's about to enter our lives in less than 20 minutes. 
So I, I do want to give some time so we can, you know, have that time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this Ramadan our best Ramadan. Amen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to witness this Ramadan in its entirety and many Ramadans to come, inshallah. Amen. And I, I forgot to mention this, but may this Ramadan also be a month in which we ignite our connection to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the month of the Qur'an. And you know, in, in my line of work, you know, we talk a lot about um, affirmations and, and you know, changing our belief systems and changing the way that we think about God, about ourselves. And then here we have the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Words are powerful. Right? I was just watching um, uh, a study that a researcher did on the power of words where they put like labels on um, water particles on petri dishes and then they would freeze them but one would be like love one would be hate they come out completely different and he was talking about the power of words they also they also did the study with plants where they would have two plants they would give them all the same environmental conditions same amount of water same amount of sunlight but they would have one person speaking very beautifully and lovingly to one plant and one person speaking very negatively to another plant and they grow differently words are powerful so then imagine then the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and its impact on our mind on our being on our heart on on your physical body on your spiritual body on your psychological wellness imagine the impact of the words of Allah on your entire being not the words of a creation no the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but we need to have a consistent connection to it where we need to show up for it as if as we show up to anything else and understand as we show up to all of the things of the dunya we understand that i need to be consistent to reap the benefits and we trust that as long as i keep showing up i'm going to receive those benefits right we need to have that same trust in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so even if you're connecting one day and you feel it if you, you don't feel it keep going because you're not you're trusting that it benefits you regardless of your emotions and as i always say we do not, and actually I'll end with this because I, I know that we're almost running out of time. Remember that we don't worship our emotions. We don't worship emotions. We worship Allah. We don't worship Ramadan. We worship the Lord of Ramadan. We don't worship the spiritual high. We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the goal is to walk towards Allah in all our conditions, whether we feel it or don't feel it, because that is what submission is. <laughs> You submit to Allah, not to your nafs, not to you. If I feel good, I walk towards Allah. You don't submit to your mind. If I understand that I walk towards Allah, no, go to him confused. Go to him if you don't understand. Go to him when you do understand. Go to him when you, when you feel good. Go to him when you don't feel good. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us walk towards him in all our conditions. And I'll stop here and take um, questions. I'll take a few. I know we have uh, a few minutes. So. Thoughts, comments, reflections. Okay. All right, we'll stop here then. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahabi ajma'in. And let's all take a few moments to be present with the welcoming of Ramadan and let's welcome it beautifully, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum We hope you enjoyed our podcast. If you're inspired by the work that we're doing at the IC and want to help keep it going, subscribe to our podcasts, follow us on social media, donate to help support us at icnyu.org, and most importantly, keep us in your continued du'as. Until next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>